In this video, what we're going to look at is what's called kerning. Now, kerning is the space in between each of the individual letters. So if we look and I take between the W and O, you see how I can move these words in, right? There are these letters in. That's called kerning. So a couple things to look at with kerning is where do we get that in the menu? Well, up at the top of the menu, it's here, but you can also get it from your character palette right here. So we're going to leave that up just so you can kind of see what's going on with that. So I'm going to select all this and just set this to zero at the moment. So if I want to go through and change some of this stuff, um, I can go through and change the kerning by using the up and down arrows, or I can use the shortcut option left and right arrow. Now, before we get into any of that, we need to change um, some settings within the design. In design preferences, and then we're going to go to units and increments. What we're looking at is where it says kerning and tracking. Now I have some, mine set to two because I feel like that's the better way of doing it. Uh, InDesign's default is set at 20. I feel like that's too big of a jump when we're dealing this because we want to be as kind of finite as possible. And yeah, hey, why not? Let's just change this to one. That way we get the finest um, detail possible. So what I want to do is what I'm going to try to match this paragraph up top that I've already gone through and kind of kerned myself. Um, so this is what we're going to try to match and I'll show you how to do that. So the first thing is we're going to get the type tool, which is T and I'm going to a shortcut for T. Um, I'm going to select the word meaning, right? And the word above it. And I'm going to use option left arrow until it just pops up to the next line. Okay, so now we're at negative 14, which is fine. When we're getting to negative 30 is a warning sign. Negative 40 is even like, ooh, maybe, maybe we can't do that. Negative 50 is then where it goes into what I call a danger zone where it's, it's, they're too close together. And I'm gonna show you some additional tricks um, when we get to full justification as far as how to make this as justified as possible. So now we're looking here and Okay, so we have this big gap that's here, right? We want to make this kind of as straight as possible. So I'm going to choose the word when and the line above it. And again, go option, left arrow. And then we're going to take the word only, right? We're going to move that in. Now, another trick that you can do is if you're holding down option and command or alt and control on the PC and hit the left arrow, that jumps in bigger in increments. So right now this is jumping in fives. And then I just kind of even that out to 27. So this is close. Like this may not be the best for some people, but I think it's okay in this situation. I'm going to bring the up to the next line. And then we're looking at this and everything is looking good. Now for this one, you see these big gaps. I want it even with this one. So I'm going to bring fewer up. And there's this there's this little gap that's here that kind of bothers me and I don't want to bring pieces up, but I'm going to bring the T up to the next line, right? And then it gives me a little bit more room to bring pieces up. So I'm using that all using option or alt uh, left arrow, right arrow makes it a uh, larger left arrow uh, brings it in. Um, and again, the other commands, if you want to kind of make them in larger jumps is command option, left and right arrow, or, Alt command, Alt control on the PC. Okay, right? so this next one is just using that same idea. It's just using it with a different um, typeface instead of it being uh, serif. This is now a sans serif. And one of the other ways that you can kind of manipulate this is you may decide, you know what, I want this paragraph to be a little bit longer to give me a little bit more room for some of these words to kind of pop up. And that's the role of like the designer to really kind of play with how this paragraph is looking. Right. And I'm just going to do a couple here just to show you um, the idea. So that is the way that kerning works inside of InDesign. Uh, it's what we as designers look at uh, a lot as far as making sure our paragraphs look nice and clean and neat.